The crazy part about flying to Singapore is that as soon as you arrive, you're already at one of the country's top attractions, the Changi Airport. As a 12-time winner of the official World's Best Airport Award, Changi is in a league of its own and boasts amenities you would never dream of seeing in any other airport. The activities are endless, and in today's video, we're exploring 20 of the most interesting things to do across the four terminals and in the newest part of the airport, aptly named the Jewel. Which is where we're starting right now. I only have a few hours before my friend's flight gets in, so I'm definitely coming back to finish up the rest of the airport, but for the time being, let's go see what we can find. Open to anyone, even those who aren't catching a flight, the Jewel is a regular hangout spot for tourists and locals looking for something to do. It's here where you'll find the iconic Rain Vortex, which is the tallest indoor waterfall in the world, measuring at over 100 feet. Most of the water is recycled rainwater, hence the name Rain Vortex. But if you're looking for most of the Jewel's attractions, head to the fifth floor. So I'm on the top level, and this is where a lot of the big attractions at the Jewel are. So I bought a ticket for the Canopy Park, and that cost me $8. And the Canopy Park includes several attractions like the Topiary Walk, which is where I'm starting off. This is a nice little nature-y walk where you can see animals made of flowers and other organic materials. And also up here with my ticket is the Foggy Bowls area, which is a fun area for kids to run around and they get sprayed by mist and it feels really whimsical. There's also an art sculpture that doubles as a giant slide. The rest of the activities in the Canopy Park require you to purchase additional separate tickets. You can walk 80 feet above the ground on a network of nets, and right next door, there's a trampoline net that you can bounce on. You can also get lost in a classic hedge maze, which also happens to be the largest in the country, And you can feel like you're in a real-life kaleidoscope by stepping into the mirror maze. So I really love the design of the Jewel, the building that we're in. All these plants are really beautiful and it makes it feel like you are in some sort of botanical garden rather than the airport. And it's also interesting because the inside of the building is very hot and humid. And I think that's because most of these plants are real plants so they need to actually be living in a similar ecosystem to what they would be in nature. I think Singapore is known as a city in the gardens or something along those lines, so this design is really reflective of the city overall. The Jewel certainly has a lot to offer, but I was even more impressed by the rest of the airport. Welcome to Terminal 3, which according to my research is a very fun terminal to be in. It is already two weeks since I've arrived in Singapore and I'm finally heading home and I just had to show you the rest of the airport. If you're looking to unleash your inner child, go no further than to the basement of the terminal where you'll find a fully fledged go-kart track. From what I could tell, they converted a parking garage into this fun racetrack that comes complete with helmets and lockers for your belongings. Another fun activity you can't miss if you want to relive your childhood is going down this four-story slide. This unique feature is the tallest slide in an airport in the world. I just made it to the slide and I'm a little disappointed because they don't open until noon, so I'm too early and I won't be able to do it today. But looking down there, I can actually see a rock climbing wall, which I didn't even know was here. So that's just another activity to add to your list. If you're here for a super long layover, you can also catch a free movie at the theater, which runs 24-7. They had some really cool movies on the schedule, including Wakanda Forever. I didn't feel like I was in the airport at all. Another seriously cool thing the airport offers to travelers with long layovers is a free and fully guided two and a half hour tour of Singapore. 
they recommend having at least five and a half hours to spare and you can register online or in person. As if Terminal 3 wasn't cool enough, they also have an impressive butterfly garden. It's already like 15 degrees warmer in here and there's so many butterflies, this is really cool. Speaking of gardens, another one you want to check out is the Cactus Garden. I've made it to Terminal 1, which is where two of the really cool gardens are. I'm currently in the Cactus Garden, and there's also a Discovery Garden, I think, not too far from here. It is really hot up here. I don't know how, but it feels hotter than the rest of Singapore, so it's very fitting for all of these cacti. The other garden in Terminal 1 is the Discovery Garden, which offers a walking path with an incline. I preferred the cactus garden, but this is still a good place to stretch your legs and get some fresh air. As a major airport, Changi offers several luxury lounges across all four terminals. My friend and I got into the Blossom Lounge in Terminal 4 with our priority passes, and I was really blown away by the quality. There was tons of food, both hot and cold options, and I feel like there were substantial vegetarian options. There was also a self-serve bar so you could fix your own drinks. This was a great place to get some work done if you needed to, and you could even freshen up with the showers and the bathrooms. That was my first time at a Priority Pass Lounge, and honestly, I was very pleasantly surprised. I would definitely recommend checking out the Priority Pass lounges. At least this one was really nice. The lounges are always fun, but honestly, eating at the food courts is a must. Singapore is definitely known as a foodie destination, and that's because they offer a great mix of Indian, Chinese, Japanese, Singaporean, and Malaysian cuisines, all at affordable prices. And luckily, if you are stuck in the airport and don't have time to make it out into the city, you can still experience some of the great food culture. In the airport, you can find food courts that replicate the hawker centers that are famous throughout the city. I got udon soup from a Japanese stall first thing in the morning, and it was delicious. Shopping is another huge attraction of this airport as there are countless luxury stores across all terminals. Lastly, take a moment to admire the interspersed art displays, koi ponds, and gardens that add a little extra delight to your travel day. Well, it is about time for me to head to my gate, but thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please give it a big thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel for more exploration inspiration, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.